Hi, I'm Kemil and welcome back to Kem with Kem. Today we're just going to um, pick up where we left off the last time. We're continuing with chemistry, paper two from the January 2022 sitting, and we're at number two. So if you if you missed the first question from the January 2022 paper, then be sure to check out the card above for that one. And of course, stay to the end of this video for the card for number three. So let's get right into it. Number two, part A. Kwesi went to the kitchen to collect his morning snack during his study break and saw some strips of green papa in a container of water. He did not think anything of it, but when he returned to the kitchen later, he observed that all the strips were swollen. Ah, this must be osmosis, he thought. Define the term osmosis. All right, so whenever we get definitions, we just gobble them up. All right, so very important key terms that we don't want to, to miss. So osmosis is the movement. Let's see how the handwriting is holding up this time around. So osmosis is the movement of water molecules from an area where there is a lot to an area where are fewer, and then the other key parts through a selectively, keyword here, selectively permeable. Not partially permeable, but selectively because it will allow some particles to pass through and some to not pass through. So through a selectively permeable membrane until evenly distributed. So osmosis is a special type of diffusion, except that in osmosis, water molecules move and then there has to be movement of the water molecules through the selectively permeable membrane. So that is key. And of course, all of this occurs because there needs to be, well, all of this occurs until there is an even or until there is, until there is even distribution. So first two marks off to a nice start. Explain how osmosis in the papa supports the particulate theory of matter. All right, so Quasi saw that strips of green papaya appear to be swollen for want of a better word. All right, so for the strips to have become swollen, they had to have absorbed water. This movement and distribution of water is evidence that matter is made up of tiny particles. All right, you might not express it like that. You could express it in fewer words. You know, but you'd use your, your own language to, to, to ex, um, explain it. But you just want to state how this supports, how it provides evidence to support the particulate theory of matter. So please note that we would have to make mention of the particulate theory of matter. Here it goes. So... For the papa strips to have become swollen, water had to traverse the selectively permeable membrane of the papa strips. This movement of water proves or supports that matter is made up of tiny particles which are always in constant motion. Now your, your wording doesn't have to be like this, but as long as you, you, you show the link between the movement of water resulting in the swelling, quote unquote swelling of the papa strips, and you link that to, as long as you make that link and you show that that is supporting the particulate theory of matter, you're good. And you, you have to cite what the particulate theory of matter is in this to get the, the two marks. All right, so that's that. So part, part three, the green papa was a solid that was placed into a liquid. State how the arrangement of particles in a liquid differs from that in a solid and a gas, all right? basic things we're not going to take it for granted so in a liquid the particles are randomly arranged with small spaces between them in a solid the particles are arranged in a regular manner with no spaces between them while in a gas the particles are randomly arranged with large spaces between them and that would give you your full marks three marks there four diffusion is another process that supports the particulate theory of matter state one example of such a process and one is there in all caps just one so feel free to share your example in the comments below this video we'd love to um hear your thoughts 
So I am going to go with one that I'm very familiar with. And this is Smelling Cave C from Across the Road. There are countless others. Please share yours in the comments. So part B of number two. The element chlorine has an atomic number of 17 and it has two main isotopes with mass numbers 35 and 37 respectively. Define the terms atomic number and mass number. Come on, give thanks for small mercies. Let's just get right to it. Atomic number refers to the number of protons in an atom and mass number refers to the sum of the protons and neutrons in an atom. Part two of B, show by calculation that chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 are isotopes. So this is another way of testing to see if you know what isotopes are. So what we would do, we know that um, mass number is 35 for chlorine 35. So we're going to have just basic mass, 35 minus 17 protons. Let's put some English in it. And our answer would be 18 neutrons. It's a neutron number that is different, all right? They're isotopes, so they have the same, the same atomic number. So here for chlorine 37, it would be 37 minus 17 protons, and that would give us 20 neutrons. And again, just like that, two marks. Part three of B, a student, while investigating the reactions of chlorine, bubbles chlorine gas into an aqueous solution of potassium iodide and deduces that the potassium iodide was oxidized because a color change occurred. Write a balanced chemical and equation with state symbols for the reaction that is responsible for the color change. Three marks. So um, before we can, well, we could just write the, um, the balanced and equation straight up. I want us to have an idea of where it's coming from. So we're going to start off with the with the balanced molecular equation first. All right, and we're using a technique to get to the ionic equation. We call it the we call it the we call it the Bible technique. Yes, a chapter a day. All right. So first things first, we're going to balance. So the first B is to balance the molecular equation. So we're going to start off chlorine, Cl2. All right. And we'll write as a gas. It's a gas that was bubbled, even though when it interacts with the water, it's going to become Cl2 aqueous. But we can um, write gas for it. Um, potassium iodide, that's Ki, and that's aqueous. And of course, chlorine is going to be displacing the iodide. So here we go. KCl, potassium chloride, aqueous, AQ, to say it's in the presence of water. And the iodine that's produced is also in the presence of water. So we put aqueous. And of course, note that the halogens, we write them as diatomic elements, Cl2, I2. So anything that ends in INE and gen, um, they are diatomic. All right, so that's the first part of Bible balance. The next thing, well, it's not balanced. So let's see, we have um, two chlorine on the left, one on the right. So we need to put a two. We need to put a two in front of KCl and that changes the K, the potassium to two. So we put a two right here. So everybody is now balanced. So that's the first B in Bible. The next thing we do is um, ionize. So the I is for ionize. So we're going to break down into ions, anything that is that is an ionic compound in aqueous medium or um, you know, an acid in aqueous medium. Anything, any element you know, in its standard form has to remain. Um, so we just get right into it. So it means that Cl2 would be written back as Cl2. Um, potassium iodide can be broken down into two moles of K plus A plus ions. We won't even say moles, we'll just say two. And we'll get two iodide ions, same state symbols. Okay, on the right, we'll have two K plus aqueous and two Cl minus aqueous. And we'll write back our iodine in aqueous medium. There are no ions present, so it would not ionize. All right, so we ionize after we ionize. We have another B from, from Bible, which means we're going to balance. So we're going to balance the ions and all the other um, species that we have that we have um, present. So if your equation was balanced from the beginning, after you ionize it, it should be balanced. But we just want to check to ensure that we did not leave, leave off anything. So two chlorine on the left, and we have two chloride ions on the right. 2K plus ions on the left, 2K plus on the right. 2I minus ions on the left, and we have I on the right. So that's good. So the next thing we do is L, which means we're going to 
leave out. So in leaving out or elimination, in leave, leaving out, we're going to cancel out all the ions that do, um, do not change in moving from the left to the right. So we have to look at their charges and we have to look at their state symbols. So we have 2K plus on the left, 2K plus on the, the right. So we're, we cancel those out. We call those the spectator ions. They're not really taking part in the reaction. It's just like a match. They're just cheering or watching. The real players here are chlorine and the iodine. And then what we do now, after we eliminate, we, we just write whatever we have left as the ionic equation. So it's really Cl2 gas plus two I minus equals, that's AQ to give two Cl minus plus I2 with equals medium. And then the final thing that we do from Bible is the E stands for equal. Ensure that we have the same charge on the left-hand side. This is the left-hand side over here and this is the right-hand side, RHS over there. So we have two minus, so the chlorine has no charge. We have two minus right here, and we have um, two minus on the right side. We have zero over there. So um, the charges are equal, so we're good to go. That does it. So this is our final answer. That's what they really wanted, but I just wanted us to, to be clear on where, on where this is coming from. So that which we've highlighted here, that's our answer. Cl2 gas plus 2i minus equals to give 2Cl minus equals plus I2 equals. All right, so chlorine here is, so chlorine here is oxidizing our iodide ions and the iodide ions being oxidized move from iodide to elemental iodine, which is in aqueous medium and that is what would be responsible for our color change. All right, tell me what, um, what you think the color change is. The color change was not, uh, mention was not made of the color change. What do you think the color change is? And please note when you're stating a color change, you need to state what the form of color was and what the final one um, is. So you have to say a color change from A to B, all right? Also, what I want you to include in the comments, what technique do you use to write an equation. I use the Bible technique. What do you use? I'd love to hear from you. And just like that, we've come to the end of working question two from the chemistry paper two from the January 2022 sitting. Now, if you like this um, video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed as yet, then now is a good time to do so. Also turn on post notifications so you can be alerted each time new material is added. Check out the other um, videos on the channel as well and I hope you find value in them. As usual, couple later.